Let's bring in Dr. William Schaffner. He is a professor of medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Doctor, so good of you to join us. I, I don't want to freak people out here with the whole, you know, the virus can, can linger in the air for three to four hours. Are we making too much out of that? I think this study shows exactly how contagious this virus is. It mm -hmm. emphasizes the importance, among other things, of course, of surface dis disinfection, but also of hand washing, because yeah. it's our hands that touch the surface and then they touch our mouths. And so if we do a lot of good hand hygiene, we'll interrupt the way that virus can get from a surface to us. And Jonathan just gave us kind of a surprising stat. Some of these new studies saying that, that you could be contagious with coronavirus for up to 37 days. Yeah, Trace, that's the odd person. Most people don't, and the infectiousness of people does diminish rather rapidly after they uh, recover from their illness. So, yes, we always have the occasional odd person who can go out for quite a while, but that's fortunately not the majority. Dr. Schaffner, I want to play what Vice President Mike Pence said this morning on Fox and Friends about this and then get your response on the other side. Listen to this. One of the things that we know about the coronavirus from our experts studying global data is it's, it's, it's two to three times more contagious as a respiratory illness. And so we'll have thousands of more cases across this country. But your viewers deserve to know that most Americans, the vast majority of Americans who even contract the coronavirus, will have flu-like symptoms and will, will fully recover. And that seems to be a fair assessment, Dr. Schaffner, because of the information that we have looked at and the people we have talked to. Most people actually do fairly well with the coronavirus. Fortunately, Trace, that's correct. And we're all very, very glad about that. It is said that 80 percent of people will have moderate or milder disease. Great. Mm -hmm. But we're also focused on that proportion of people who are older and, of course, who have underlying illnesses. We want to make sure that we take care of them because they're more apt to have serious disease. Yeah, we're talking about the NBA now canceling the rest of the season. Other leagues have done the same, big events being canceled, music festivals, so forth. What are your thoughts on that? Is that, is that a proper response? I think it's an excellent response mm -hmm. because this virus is transmitted person to person largely through close contact and by Avoiding groups and having these large group events canceled, we'll be keeping ourselves somewhat separated, making it harder for the, ri the virus to find another person and another person after that to infect. Does the designation, doctor, of this being now a global pandemic, does that change the physical way we approach this or is that just a mindset? Is that a psychological term to kind of get us aware of what's going on around us? It's a very important psychological mindset issue. It recognizes that we're now in a global problem. We're all working on this together, and nobody can say, gee, it won't come to my hometown. This really grabs yeah. everyone's attention and keeps us focused. Yeah, as, as far as us being focused, I want to put this on the screen. These are symptoms of COVID-19 of coronavirus, and it is fever, cough, and shortness of breath. It's kind of short and sweet there, but, but are we missing something critical in this list, doctor? Well, the shortness of breath obviously is on the more severe end. And on sometimes on the less severe end, you can have people without fever. You can have people with a primarily abdominal complaints, such as abdominal pain and diarrhea. So the clinical spectrum, as we're learning, is a little broader than we originally had anticipated. Dr. William Schaffner, good information, sir. Thank you so much for the insight. My pleasure.